Linda lived here in this greenhouse in the university district along with five other university students. She was last seen here Thursday evening about 12 o'clock. Linda was one of the first people I met, certainly the first person I spent any time with. And I can't explain the welcome embrace that I received from her. I think we both knew within a day or two that we were going to be very dear friends. And we were together all the time and excited about the world and life. We had late night conversations all of the time about what we wanted to be, what we wanted to do. She was just vibrant, just, there's not a room she walked into that didn't light up. She was beautiful. She is beautiful. It was Linda's week to cook. And so Friday night, she planned to have her parents over for dinner. And we were all supposed to be there. That night, she wanted to do something extra special. So I told her I would help her with the meal. And so we were planning it together. I had a bedroom on the main level by the kitchen. And she stopped in so that we could discuss everything we were going to do the next evening uh, for dinner. And she was very chipper and cheerful. And she said, OK, I'm going down to sleep because she had to get up early. I came home, ran up the steps into the house. And somebody was walking up the street. I didn't look, just sort of went in and locked the front door. Our upper two roommates, Ginger and Monica, were upstairs asleep. Joanne had a bedroom off the kitchen on the main floor. Linda and I shared the basement. My window faced the back of the house. And then her window faced the other side of the house. So I came in and I stayed up probably about a half hour, 20 minutes, and talked with Joanne in the kitchen. And then I went down to bed. And when I went down to bed, I locked the side door. You go down four steps. When I got up in the morning, the alarm was going and it wasn't being shut off. And it went on and it went on and on and on. So I went in and shut it off and her bed was made perfect. I mean, like she'd never slept in it. And then the phone rang as I was getting ready to leave and it was the radio station. She did ski reports on the radio to earn a little money in the mornings. And they were asking where Linda was. And I said, I don't know. She doesn't appear to have slept here. Her jeans were gone. Her shoes were gone. But the door was unlocked, the side door that I had locked on my way down. Didn't make sense. Is she prone to, to leave the house at night? Uh, no. She has been known to take walks now and then, but only uh, when someone is with her. What I remember is having to be very insistent that something was wrong. That the police were, well, maybe she took off with a boyfriend, or maybe she's having an abortion, I think they said, and which just absolutely made me crazy because I knew that was not true. At some point, another officer came and he wanted to see where her room was. So we went down there and he looked around and her room was completely in order. And he pulled the bed sheet back and we saw the blood. And I said, well, maybe she had a nosebleed. You just want to go to a rational place. But it was too much blood. So then he looked in the closet and he pulled out a nightgown that had blood on it as well. Um, so then, of course, it flashes through your mind that someone must have dressed her and made the bed and was in the room for a while. And we just didn't have any real deep sense yet of the horror of it. 